Well, well, it's a long time ago back in our first cafe. It was our first business after we returned from a four year journey around the world, myself and Vinny, my best mate. On that journey we tasted some beautiful chai. Mario and I were uh, just finding our legs in the industry. And when we opened up our cafe, we felt we could do better than the, the chais that were on the market. So we started making it ourselves for our customers. We were serving a, a chai and we weren't particularly happy with it. So I decided that I'm going to go home one day and make my own and uh, came up with a recipe at home and tested it on mum for about a week until the end of the week she said that's enough i can't take any more vincent it's good and she gave me a little secret uh, ingredient too actually which i can't divulge here and then we introduced it into the cafe without telling our customers from there people were just like this is great some of our customers were cafe owners and they requested the chai to use in their cafes so we just sort of unofficially gave them some when we made it uh, on a Friday night over some beers. So Lightbulb went on with us and put together a little um, price list and uh, made up some little dealy bags of uh, the sticky black chai. Sort of just grew from there. We got a few customers organically that way and then um, one day Vince said to me, oh, tomorrow I'm not coming to work, I'm going to go and see if I can drum up some more business. And we were dealing it in uh, big one kilo bags that we would we'd mix in the, the cafe after service to all hours of the night. People saw us in the back smashing up spices on a wooden stump and mixing chai yeah. until 9, 10 o'clock at night in the front of the cafe. Yeah. Remember? Past past what are you doing? Spoon. A wooden spoon. And we, mixing it up. We had, the, we had little stickers made up for it. And famously I said, nah, don't be stupid, it'll never work. <laughs> he just proved me wrong. It wasn't until Karai came later on in peace, who was a customer of ours. That's around about the time when Prana Chai was born. I think it was not, nothing that was planned. I was a customer of Mario and Vincent's at their um, coffee shop in uh, St Kilda on Inca, Increment Street, Inca 7. Basically, I was going there every day, um, having the same thing, the same coffee, eggs and pancetta. <laughs> and um, we became friends and you know naturally it evolved into asking questions or oh, what do you do this that and the other my background was in marketing and a little bit of business and um, i learned about the about what they were doing via vincent by joining him on a delivery run and everyone loved it and um, at the end of the day i was happy to be there and the boys said well if you want to join you can join we are going to run the coffee shop you can do the other stuff while we are working and then we can join our forces. When I started in your kitchen, I was washing dishes, all of them at the same time. How was that? You know? <laughs> it's one of those stories, you know, you go into a coffee shop, you met a girl, in my case, Marian Vincent, <laughs> and then we married and <laughs> that's it. Um, I mean, I was, I was in a different spot at that time, like mentally as well, and their friendship meant a lot to me. They're very accepting, very positive and we laughed together, we, we worked together, and that was it. That was what I was seeking at that time, basically. And then just slowly over the years, it's sort of grown from there. It's gone from a side hustle to, you know, semi-professional outfit. <laughs> I think I'm becoming more fun. You're becoming too serious lately. Of course, I was going to... Where's the... Where's the... Where's the... Where's the... Where's the... 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 I didn't care about the ins and outs of the, you know, the business at that point in time. But then later on, as we moved along, um, I saw that there was light behind it. I saw the, you know, the, the, the reaction from the customer side. Like, and I said to myself, you know, you don't need to work in a big multinational corporation. You know, you can you can do this. That was that was a spark for me. Then I put all my energy into this. Well, for a long time, we all did everything, and. In the early days, our success was due to that. You know, we'd get to the factory early in the morning and we'd all make chai. So there's three of us. So a round robin competition of table tennis helps nut out. Whoever wins is basically the one who decides on what we do next. And we'd go hell for leather until 12 o'clock and we had to get it all done by 12 because we needed that four hours in the afternoon to do all the other things on the business. I think the turning point was when the boys sold their coffee shop and decided to join, join me at the factory. That was a turning point because 
I needed people around me and to, to help me navigate the waters, you know. Karai was from a corporate background and so he, he said it many times that you know, his life changed when he found his kind of child with us. I didn't know everything and let alone I was not from hospitality, you know, so I was limited in both capability and, um, and, and hospitality experience. So at that point when the, when the boys decided to join, it was, it was like everything was smooth, smoother. There's so much information now, like remember when we started, we didn't have well, YouTube or anything like that to learn more about coffee, it was just it was a hands-on experience and learning face-to-face. We first started, we were making four or five coffees in one jug of milk. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what those days were. Yeah. It was very, very different back then. Even if the times were not good, we found a way and that kept us together. Over the years, it's sort of, we've tried to departmentalise and stuff. Are you interrupting? I'm just, I, I didn't know. Don't worry, mate. You want some lunch? We're going to all go order. Spicy chicken bowl, extra chicken. Even if we had shit time, um, I don't know, can I say that? <laughs> and uh, over here, I'll just show you the Great Wall of Pallets. This was built in 1965. <laughs> Still stands today as one of the great construction models of our time. Sweating. <laughs> it is very much why we exist. For, you know, um, to keep the customer happy by offering two things. You know, you can you can offer two things. You can offer a good product. I mean, I mean a product and a service. And that product must be good because one of the turning points in our journey was that we decided to do only one product so it had to be good far and beyond the most important thing to us and service which means if they want to call you if they are not happy about something you should be approachable and you should honestly genuinely try to solve their problem and that's what we focused on and it is really important that how, how do we keep our customers happy basically applying these two rules Good product, good service, be genuine, honest. We're out at cafes, we're on the road, we don't just send stuff from a 3PL or, you know, wherever we can, we get in the car and we drive. If someone wants something on a weekend, one of us live in all different parts of Melbourne and we can, you know, can we get something to them? We will try our hardest because that's what separates you from being good and being great, I think. It's, it's, it's everything, you know, product and service. I mean, we. We used to say that to each other when we had the cafes. Just uh, loose, loose tea that we get from Sri Lanka, only the best tea that we can source. Product and service. You know, you can, or well, we believe anyway, that you can market to a whole audience and, and get people to try the product that have never heard of it, never tried it before. And that's great, but once they're trying the product and using it, well, they're not going to stick around if the product and the service isn't up to standard. We try and keep our, we, we like our teas to have a really good moisture content. That's it. And they understand. It. It's seen through. That, that, that aspect of honesty is seen. This is some of our spices here. Cloves and ginger. I guess the biggest highlight is moving into our own production facility after 12 or so years just to do what we do well and do it well every day and have a good time. This is the production room. This is one part of the production room. It's, it has two parts and this is where the blend is uh, you know, uh, done. Uh, it's a mixing room. When you see, you know, when you sort of look here and you see everything <laughs> Everything stacked properly and in line and everything in its place. Um, Vin is always, you know, says that I crap on too much about the factory and how, how it's operating, but I really believe, I've said it a million times, that when the factory is in order and the factory is running well, the whole company is running well. And that exporting thing um, happened later on and it started to become successful and it made me proud, to be honest. It's a great feeling. It's a bit surreal sometimes too. Like even like friends travelling. Yeah. I'll be somewhere, it's you know, in the world like... I saw Guess, look what I've just seen on the, on yeah. the shelf. Sending you photos of the product. Yeah. yeah, like where's that? 
Where's that? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. The last one I got was um, on one of the Greek islands. Oh, really? Yeah. Julian is like, what the hell is going on? He was just in a is that your mate hotel, you yeah, know, saw it on the shelf. So. Yeah. How did that get here? Yeah, exactly. One day I remember a couple of years ago I was um, doing a market research in Europe in a small town in Europe and on not not even on a main street on off the main street in one of the side streets I saw a coffee shop and I was walking I walked walked into the coffee shop and I saw the bag over there. Most probably the bag I basically myself filled in a couple of months back in back in Melbourne, you know. And that that was that was invaluable, you know, it was very, very good. It's just nice when people say, I love your chai, it's great. Yeah. I always go to a cafe and I always ask for it. Like, that's, that's the best feeling for me. We have accounts that have been buying our product on a weekly basis 11 years in a row. I guess another thing too, which is one of the things that I wanted to do is to give back to a community. So uh, working with uh, Mukti and being able to donate some of our revenue from the bags that we sell back to helping uh, the tea farmers and their children and putting their kids through school. That's been a proud sort of moment for me and I guess the other two guys as well, but that's another one that makes me feel good every, every day I come to work knowing that we're doing, we're doing something good and there's someone out there receiving it. Got the white. Oh good. I'm glad we did the white. It's going to be our fourth iteration of what our packaging looks like. You know, we worked hard in trying to come up with something fun and new, part of the packaging which really represents who we are. We've got five flavours and each flavour represents some sort of quirky little feeling that, that kind of chai invokes in someone. So we came up with a couple of illustrations that basically define who we are, what we are to our customers. And most of the responses were, oh, it's my moment in time, in the day. You know, I use it for myself and that's, that, that became actually our main character. It's the warm hugs moment. I think that's really iconic of Prana Chai because it's like a warm hug. It's interpretive as well, you know, like it, it can mean, each image can mean different things to different people, which is, yeah. which mm. is good. You know, I love the illustrations, I love the way that it's simplified a little bit, it was too congested. We've got some merch going on. Break down the barriers between Having, coming in having a fast takeaway chai, so yeah. taking your time, having something that's created and done well, just as well as a coffee, but just as quick, if not quicker than a coffee. That was the barrier that we worked hard to break down. Yeah. Going to a cafe, a good cafe, is all about experience, right? You want to have a good coffee, good meal, good ambiance, the day for it's all, all, ticks all the boxes. What we do is we tick the box of the premium chai category. We are sort of, always trying to be a bit more professional with our work and try to continue to try to be the best chai company we can. My parents were in hospitality and my dad always said, you know, if you in the old age, if you find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And it's absolutely true. You know, this is, I mean, we've worked hard. And we still do work hard, but we enjoy it. And the celebration of all these years in a great industry, which we all love, so I think it's one of the great industries and that you can be a part of because it's positive people, it's fun, it's food, it's, you know, I love it. The friendship that's come out of it. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's, that's the most valuable thing to me, still to this day. It's a good thing. <laughs> I will go upstairs. <laughs>